In this module, we're going to look at pipelines in more detail. And in the quick start, we've seen that we can use the drag and drop functionality to build up data workflows called pipelines. OK, so what is a pipeline? They're just a tool that lets you access the stream processing service for transforming, validating, processing, enriching and analyzing data. And you can have many of these actions and you can have them performing serially like we had in the quick start, or you can have these actions perform in parallel. And data streaming pipelines are particularly particularly powerful for enabling continuous data ingestion and processing and movement from the source into the destination as soon as the data is generated in real time. And this technology is used across many industries to handle live feeds for streaming ingest and processing and it really accelerates data delivery real time and insights and analytics. So as we've seen, pipelines can be built by dragging operators, which we know as nodes, from the left-hand entity tree and linking them together. And you can think of these nodes as the building blocks for your pipeline, where each one is capable of operating on data in a stream, but where each one has a specific function. So starting with the reader nodes, most of the time you're probably going to want to start with these and that allows you to get some data into your pipeline and this can be from external sources like we've seen in the quick start where we read from a kafka feed or internal sources like your existing insights database or streams we also have writers so i'm going to touch on them next because ultimately if you do some operations on your data you're going to want to save that result and your pipeline will usually end in a writer node and again you have a variety of both internal and external destinations to choose from so the other options in between here depend on what you want to do with your data set and there's no right or wrong order to apply these in but let's look back at our quick start example where we can see we started with data in json on format so therefore it made sense to parse this to KDB using the relevant decoder node. But if we did have other data formats, we would choose the other option, obviously. Next, we have the functions node, which basically allows you to apply any code you like to your data. For example, we wanted to transpose this table. So we have the columns on the top and the data in the records in the table. So we use that keyword in list, which is a function in KDB that allows us to do that transformation. We could have also added a select statement here to filter on certain rows or columns. And you might want to do a calculation by multiplying two columns together, for example. And you can use Python to do that here. You can also use any predefined UDFs that might be available in your system. And this map node is great because it allows you to have full flexibility to code and configure whatever changes you want to make to your incoming data. But you do have options of other nodes like merging two data streams together, for example, and also one to split the data into two downstream nodes. So I would recommend checking out all of these to learn more and you can find out all about them on the docs and you'll see what they can be used for and if they're going to be useful for your use case specifically. Next, we used a transform node and that allowed us to apply a schema to our incoming data. And this is important when we want to save our data to a KDB Insights database so that our incoming data is going to match the destination. You can also do other transformations here like renaming your columns, removing infinites and nulls and editing your temporal columns as you see fit. And these are very common requirements in data cleansing for a lot of use cases. So these nodes made these easier for our end users, giving a low code option so that you don't have to write all of this code in a map node, but you obviously can do that if you wish instead. We also have some window nodes, which we didn't use in our quick start. And these allow you to group your data into windows or buckets so that the data can be aggregated for easier and faster analysis. For example, we can aggregate based on the number of records you want in each window using the count window, or we could aggregate by say every 10 seconds using the timer window. Again, do read more on our docs about this if you think that aggregating based on time or logical groups makes sense for your data set. Next, we have string utilities, which are just a quick option when you want to transform between uppercase or lowercase strings in your data set. We also have statistics here which allow for quick computation of summary statistics and different types of averages like simple or exponential moving averages or a time weighted average. Then we have machine learning operators which allow you to use an existing model or to create a model from streaming data to predict future values based on data within the stream. And in fact, we have an example of this in action in our manufacturing tutorial, which we'll touch on in the later module 
on machine learning. Finally, we have encoders, which are kind of the opposite to decoders. So they allow you to go from a KDB format to an external data format. And these are really useful when you want to publish your data to a different system externally and you want to have it in the right format before you send it out. I also want to mention it's good to keep an eye on your pipelines through the diagnostics window, which you can see we have both for databases and our pipelines here. And you'll be able to see if there's any errors or warnings and just generally keep an eye on the health of your pipelines and databases. Okay, that's it for this module. Try the end of course module to test what you've learned.